Welcome to another episode of the Coach's Corner. It is your host, Todd Pierce here again. And my name is Dean Martin. And look, we've got a cool guest here. It's actually one of our students. Her name is Jade. And Jade does some cool stuff. Jade actually works with women in business and she helps people that... Because what's interesting, right, with the, women, the, the ladies that you work with, you're saying, right, so they tend to have an issue with balance in their lives, balancing their personal life with their work life. They often have kids. And you basically help... You basically come in and help bring that chaos into order, right? Give them structure, yep. give them systems and help them get some stuff on track. Yep, that's exactly what I do. Wicked. So right. it's awesome to have you on here today. So let's start from the start. I'm not going to tell you know what I'm like, guys. I don't really tell our people's stories. They can tell it themselves. So talk to us, Jade. What has brought you here? You know, why coaching? You obviously also have a beauty clinic as well. So I'm sure you can yeah. talk about that. So what's kind of brought you to this point right now where you are working with ladies in a coaching setting how you are? <laughs> well, I just, I remember being at home and always just wanting to be more and pursuing different things. And then I went into a beauty clinic yep. and I realised probably for the first time ever that I needed a lot more help than my own mind, my own vision and my own thoughts to kind of make that happen and make it successful. Yep. And when I did that, um, I started searching for different coaches in my industry to kind of help me along the way. Mm. And what I found after going through multiple coaches is that they did not know how to teach me how to manage or give me the tools to manage home and business in a way that um, would still create momentum and success within my business and contentment at home. Mm. And yeah, I just made the decision that I needed to figure it out for myself. And I've always found that women always came to me for how do you do that? How do you do this and whatnot? And, and I just started to ask myself that question. And I'm like, well, how do I do that? Mm. And started doing the work on myself so I could then teach other people how to do it instead of giving them kind of whim whimsical guidance. How many kids do you have? Guidance. Five. Five. That'd be uh, quite busy, yeah? Yeah, very busy. So basically, you know to walk the tightrope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's, that, that's cool. So obviously, like... When you are a, a a woman in business, especially when you've got kids, like that can be really challenging. So what are some of the, 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 the key challenges that you find the ladies that you do work with have? It's like a conflict. One of the big things that they have is conflict between whether they're being um, a good mum mm -hmm. or a successful businesswoman because they feel like the more energy they apply to their business, the less time they're giving to their children. So it's not only judgment on themselves, but judgment from other people. Because yep. everyone has a preconceived idea of what an attentive, doting, um, present mother is mm. and what, yeah, and they kind of have judgment on themselves a lot about it and a lot of guilt and and that sort of thing. And I, I feel like it's it's like a lot of emotions and things that they have kind of around that, being a good parent, being a good business owner. They have obviously aspirations and dreams they want for themselves and mm. they feel like they're more than just one piece of this big picture so how does that conflict how do you find that conflict kind of manifests and um sh shows itself up in their lives um it shows within their marriage um or their partnerships if they've got um business partners or friendships because mm -hmm. of the time that they're um dedicating to those particular people mm -hmm. and how people are used to having them present in their life and how they how they are now when yeah. they've you know when they've come into a business it shows up in their ability to actually create successful um, implement implementations of um, like strategies for money making within their business, mm -hmm. um, because they like might only go part the way and then kind of back off because the more time they're giving to it, they're pulling away from their kids. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it, it really affects a lot of things. It's, it keeps their business kind of running at half a mile and instead of going a full. Yeah. So and how do most of the women that you work with perceive balance? Like is it, you know, is there a certain area that you must give more to? Is it? It's not the same thing for everyone. So you'll, when, when I work with different women, some of them are feeling like their business is falling apart. Mm. And because they're spending so much time trying to do all of these things, they've got this, con like this stress around, oh, no, I've got to do this, this and this. And they're kind of using it also as a way to, like I've got to just kind of figure out what they're, they're doing in between to figure out whether where they're, they're not feeling like it's kind of harmonising. Mm. So 
it's different for every one of them. So when I talk to them about balance, it's about creating structure and organisation and self-care and everything so that they can feel like the shitstorm they created for themselves <laughs> isn't so shitstormy. So the more they wing it, the more out of structure their day is, is that what you're saying? Yeah. They can't... Don't it's wing not it. something you can wing. Mm. No. Yeah, so... One thing you said there, as you really talked about that, is that like you, you've, you've had women obviously come to you and, and ask you for, I guess, guidance and advice for a while, but you also said, I'm assuming there's, there's a large element, because when you do something well, five kids and you've got a business that goes really well, you've got your coaching business going really well as well, like there would be things that you do unconsciously that you don't even realize that you do. Yeah. So what was that kind of process like unpacking your own I guess you could say IP, your own systems and structure and order. How was it unpacking that to them be able to obviously teach that to people? Well, I had to start with my emotions and my limiting beliefs yeah. and decisions that I had um, given myself so that I could I could actually um, make more mature emotional decisions about things or when shit hits the fan or problems arise or something's not working, then I handle it really differently. So. Mm. That's one of the things I did. Um, I also think outside of the box. So there is no box to me. Yep. So if there is something going on, um, everyone else is like thinking about, or other women can tend to think about, you know, oh, I can only do this, this and this. And it's like this idea of a box. And I just get rid of the box and I'm like, well, no, well, if I can't do that, then what else can I do to make that work? Yep. And I've always been that way. So that's one of the things that I teach. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, um, as much as me, myself, I actually really hate being organised. I love being able to just do whatever the hell I want when I feel like it. Yep. I have to, I had to really get over myself and um, create um, organisation charts at home for my kids. So one for them so that they're doing the shit that they need to do at home. So yep. I swear a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, um, giving them my calendar so they're not asking me, like having five children and a husband and that ask you, oh, um, <laughs> so wh what are you doing again? And you know you've got like seven million things to do. It's better just to put it on the board because then you can just, instead of having that conversation that may take 10 minutes per child, um, just send them out to the board. Yeah, it's just <laughs> up on the board out there. You'll know what I'm doing. You can ask me to help you with this at this time. Systems, baby. Systems. Systems, baby. And at work too. So I have a lot of um, policies and procedures at work. So... Literally how our, like our team and me and my sister have a business together and how our team run, um, they could walk into work and see an open and closed checklist and how to run every shift for every day. Yep. So they know how to do everything. So it's just being organised and everything and having a lot of, um, well, if this goes wrong, this is what happens or yep. if this person asks for this, this is what you've got to do and just having it like right in front of them so that's easy for them to do whether I'm there or not. So, so what are the big challenges that stand between um, women in business that are having issues with this and actually getting to this state where there's systems, there's policies and procedures, you know, your emotions aren't getting... Well, what stands in the way of that, do you find? What are the big challenges? It's all about how what they feel that they can do, what they really feel they can do, mm -hmm. not what they're saying to me, what they actually feel like they're capable of doing, what they what their belief is they have in themselves. Yep. Um, and, yeah, it's just really getting down to the heart of that, like what it is that they really need and really working on that first and then all the rest just seems to fall in place. And there's little wins when you work on your emotional state, like overcoming things and making realisations for yourself there yep. and um, really taking ownership of your bullshit. Mm. You have to take ownership of your bullshit yes. or you get nowhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, yeah, and the rest of it just seems to fall in place because by the time we work on all of the emotions and everything like that um, and triggers, things that yep. trigger them, understanding triggers is a big thing because that's really contracted thinking. So... Um, teaching them how to kind of understand all of their triggers and... What are some examples of triggers that would kind of be in effect that kind oh, of... Oh, I can tell you one off. I did this morning. Okay. So <laughs> um, I couldn't find my makeup bag and I, I really didn't want to come in here and 
be half disappeared. So <laughs> I, I didn't realise that I left my makeup bag somewhere and then... You would have disappeared. Come <laughs> on, if Dean can be seen <laughs> yeah, even with the white, the white backdrop. White background, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we left our makeup at home too, unfortunately. It's crazy. <laughs> That's right, so. Casper. No. <laughs> um, it's just, a, it's a little thing, but because I woke up and um, the kids were bickering, so I was already in kind of a little bit of a stress state and... Yep. Not if I don't take a moment to kind of really feel out that moment, that feeling, mm. and and kind of go, oh yeah, I'm feeling a bit stressed. If I don't recognise that, it can come out as a trigger. So I couldn't find my makeup bag. Um, my daughters keep stealing my makeup because I have two teenage daughters, and I had to say, can I please borrow your makeup because you're the one that's closest to my skin type. And blah. My daughter's like, oh no, well I don't have that, <laughs> and she kind of may have got snapped at this morning and then I've gone, oh, shit, sorry about that, babe. Can I just please borrow it? I left all my makeup at work yesterday because I was rushing around. Yep. And it's like the stress is the trigger. So understanding what the triggers are and unpacking the triggers helps yep. people think a little bit better because it's never what you think it is. It's always something else. Yep. And then it's obviously if, if you're not able to identify that and, and resolve that in the moment, I'm assuming if you have issues at home and then you go to work, like mm – -hmm. Ladies are going to be taking that, not just ladies, both men and ladies, honestly. Yeah. Like if you have issues at home, you have to be careful not to take that with you to work because then that obviously would affect and impact your staff, the way you communicate with mm -hmm. them, the way you communicate with um, customers, potential clients. So I guess the first, I guess, layer, the first pillar of your program is all about the emotional baseline, right? So yeah. walk us through that there. What's, what's happening there when you're working with ladies and how does that help resolve conflicts between home and and um, their work? The reason it helps is because when they can recognise and understand their responses and their own emotions, um, they're not so inside their head and they're able to focus on what's actually happening, what they actually have to do. Mm. So um, one of the very first modules in my program is literally about giving them a deal process, so what decisions they're making around an absolute problem that they've made up in their mind or experienced, yep. um, what emotions they're feeling, are really accepting that that's their emotion and their feelings and how they how they come to that conclusion and how they learn. So I literally call it the deal process for them. Mm. And I give them little tools like that for them to work on and sort of explain to me how they went from this and how they got to this amazing realisation of what that actual situation was and how it really doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't really shape the way their day is going to go. And then really kind of um, just understanding, like I, I just ask a series of questions within that and get them to really ask themselves the same things yeah. about why they might be experiencing those things so they can understand it for themselves, not me teach them, them figure out things for themselves. Nice. Um, so they're not relying on other people to make things So you teach them how them. to fish. Teach them how to fish. So they don't have to give them the damn fish. That's really cool. Yeah. So so from there, what's kind of the next step in that journey? Because obviously the, the journey that Jay takes her clients on is from a place where there's chaos, there's imbalance, there's uh, struggling with feeling like you've got two identities. Is that right? Yeah. And you kind of take them to that place where they've got that structure, that order, their business is going well, their home life is going well, and they're happy, right? Yeah. So like what's the, 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 the steps in that journey? What does it look like? And yeah, I just with the emotions, I go through the emotions, I go through like their limiting decisions and beliefs yep. um, because when you have things like I, I can't make, uh, I'm not, money's bad, for example, when you yep. have beliefs around that, like that money's bad and it's bad to make money for whatever decision they've made that for, yep. that's not really going to help you make money in your business and therefore not give you the freedom that you can have a little bit more relaxed mm. lifestyle to give back to your children. So yep. um, so we work on that. Do and you then, find that some of the ladies that you do work with do have some limiting stories around money? Oh, I can't actually think of a single one that hasn't. Really? Well, just, yeah. just for the people watching, what are some examples of money stories that they've got? Um, a lot of them have been at home with their husbands and the husband's the provider and they're yep. looking after the children and that's like taken away a bit of their self-worth because they um, essentially, if they're an entrepreneur, they're actually independent. They're quite an independent person. They yep. like to do things. They like to um, create um, successful opportunities for themselves and money. Yep. And when they're at home with their children... Um, you have to be quite dependent on your partner. Mm. Um, it's just, it happens whether you've got savings in the bank or not before you had your babies, yep. you have to depend on your partner. So 
somewhere along that time they kind of lose that idea of um of what they're really capable of yep. so there's that capability um you know just that sort of thing that worthiness is, money. is there like an issue like for example when when they are able to get past that and you know get back into business or they've got their business is there like issues when they start for example what if they started earning more money than their partner does that then create conflict between the partner uh, and the, hu- yes. like the husband and the wife the wife and the husband? like what's that kind of look like um it's it's not so much them. It's us, it's usually the partner that has issues, and then there's the woman not wanting to f- their partner unconsciously. They don't want to um, make their partner feel less masculine or less kind yeah, of masculine. in charge. So they literally keep themselves in a place where they're not going to overthrow their husband's status, financial mm. status, and business. So yeah, um, and yeah, and that's another part of it too. Like um, women, if they don't have a partner. Um, their other issue is that they come across uh, dominant or like an alpha female and they find they've got this preconceived idea that they're actually um, unattractive to men because they're so straightforward and, um, you know, they can just do shit for themselves or they're using their, um, using their masculine energy more. Like I've even had some of the women say that I feel like I'm more, like I'm more of a masculine female because yeah. I'm using this energy and... Yeah, so your feminine energies is so different to your masculine energy, so they are tapping into that to be a successful businesswoman and they yep. have this idea that they're unattractive or men are going to perceive them that way. Well, what so, I just said, opposites attract, right? And, and like if you are being very, very strong in your masculine energy, then you actually, really, you're not going to attract unless you attract a, a man who's got even more masculine energy than you do. And yeah. then as a result, you subject to that energy and you release more of your feminine energy, but that's obviously a different story. Yeah, but for an everyday woman, yeah. they wouldn't understand that at all. It's just yep. this idea they've got. So they literally hold them back, themselves back when they're you yeah. know, trying to re- meet the right person in their life or meet someone in... So what kind of advice would you give a woman that has kind of put that ceiling in place? It basically says my husband, for example, or partner, for example, um, earns this much. I don't want to, and my, this may not even be a conscious thought that they have. It may be very unconscious, right? But what, what, what what's the advice that you would give someone that's kind of put that ceiling in place where I don't want to earn more than this and then they hold themselves back in their business? How do you kind of get past that? To be honest with you, I mean, personally, and being really honest, I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. But <laughs> um, one of the things that I would say to them, I'd always suggest for them to speak to their partner about it. Yeah. Talk to them about it. Say to yeah. them, you know, I don't, you know, just to have the discussion with them so they can understand where they're at and they can both work on it together. Yeah. Um, or just if they're a woman that just really wants to grow and their partner, you know, after doing all of that, like trying to have some understanding and, and working together on that and they just don't get it, then well, is that the right partner for them? Yeah. I mean, I would never say that to them. That's their conclusion to come up to. Yeah. But like, is that the right person if they don't want to see them success and Correct. And, and thrive and be whoever they need to be and be amazing? <laughs> Are all the women that you work with aware of these limiting beliefs or do you uncover them? Mm, some of them are aware and then other women are just sort of, I just help them unpack it and figure it out for themselves. And then what's that reaction like? Um, <laughs> it's not always good, that's for sure. It's kind of like, um, it's interesting. It's really, really interesting because it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it. Like it's more of like, it's like someone smacked them in the face. <laughs> and they've just had a realisation that, wow, it is me holding me back rather than... All yeah. these other external it's got nothing to do with anyone else. It's all you. Yeah. Mm. So that's pretty much what my first part of my pillar is. It's just getting them to come back to self and understand where everything starts and yeah. where it actually, your abundance actually happens. It's all in your first pillar. Yeah. And what's interesting for those that don't know is that sometimes when you just get presented with the harsh reality of a belief that's maybe, you know, not that rational. Sometimes that in and of itself can have collapse. I just had a client recently who had an exact experience. Like the belief was so absurd. It was absurd. Like it was there for a reason. It was modelled from when they were younger, so between yeah. zero to 14 years of age. And um, it is played out, right? It was activated at a certain stage and then it was creating chaos in their life up until now. And 
as a coach, right, it's fun when you find <laughs> a belief that is this completely nonsense, right? And once again, you know, we're not saying that they, the person, are nonsense, but the belief itself is nonsense. And this particular one, it was so irrational, it made absolutely no sense, and their evidence procedure for having this belief were two people in their lives. And I was just like, hang on a second. So you're, the only thing that's reinforcing this belief for you is these two people, <laughs> Are there anybody else in the world? There's not 7 billion more people in the world, right, that you could potentially look at to get something that's opposite to that belief. And they're like, are you sure? How do you know that's true? They're like, oh, my God, it's not true. <laughs> and in and of itself, it can explode the problem, which is so much fun. And obviously, if you're a coach it watching is, this, you know great. what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's so much fun when you catch them on something that's there. And obviously, you know, you've got your rapport, so they're open to the to the, the, the change in the first place. But cool. So that's the first thing. It's really getting them in touch with, I guess, the, the, the as you said, the baseline, right? What's really going on, you know, what's happening with them that's creating everything else. Yeah. So once you've got that stuff there all aligned and cleaned up, the next thing that you kind of work with is all about organization, right? So yeah. how to organize. And does it's that very easy to get someone to or get a have a, a woman just get to that conclusion where yeah. that that part of the module is just like, yep, bring it, yep. give it to me, because they've come to a point where they realized everything's on them. Yep, and yep. that it's all about what what they need to do to yep. make things work. And then it's just yeah, we start with the family first. Never start with the business first. As much you know, it's it's already. Everything was crazy in the first place. That's why they came to me. Yeah. So they need to start with the family first because if things aren't working at home, then there's no point focusing on that because everything will just crumble. Yeah. As a business, like as a mum in business, your family is part of the pillars that hold your business up. Yeah. It's not, it's not this, um, this concept that you've got, this is how your business runs and that's it. Your family is actually part of that. So if your family is not working, the rest of it's just going to fall apart anyway. There's weakness yeah. in the foundation. I think I just want to point something out too in regards to the process that you do do with women. For those watching, you might have noticed, right, you know, Jade doesn't start with organisation. And I'm assuming that some people would think that that's what they need first. But like, you know, for anyone that is a coach that's watching this, you know, like the primary thing you have to work with first is cleaning out the garden. Just getting the mindset right, getting the emotions right, deflating the triggers, disconnecting all that stuff. Because if you go and try and, and teach them all these great organizational skills, systems, processes, everything like that, but you're planting those seeds in a garden with, with effectively weeds, mm -hmm. then like what kind of crop are you going to get? Yeah, that's right. So you start with the family, which is obviously super important. Once again, process and flow is important. So what's what's that kind of look like? Like what are you doing there? So it's, it starts with family, then you start to work, obviously getting their business cleaned up too? Yeah, so with the family, it's just creating structure and routine around not just their time, like how they manage the household because, you know, even the housework needs to get done, how yeah. they manage all of that sort of stuff. It's not just the organisation around that and the everyday stuff, getting to school, getting to work not and, and sports and all of that. It's, um, I've completely lost my train of thought. Just That's cool. seconds. This is what happens when you're tired. <laughs> um, Five yeah. kids. <laughs> yeah, it was chaotic this morning. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it's not just all of those things. It, see, look, it's gone. It's completely gone. Just That's that, good. Just ask me another question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in the family, obviously a, a, a part of getting that organisation right, like one of the things you talked about earlier is you've got the, is like a, like a chart or something like that that's got everyone's schedule. Yeah, so the kids have got their own charts. So um, they've got their own routines. So like they've got their morning routines, their um, home routines. Their, if they've got chores to do, which all my kids have, even yep. Tobias, who's four, yep. five now, he turned <laughs> five on Tuesday. Um, yeah, they all have their own chores and then just their, um, what they need to get done for the next day. Mm. Um, and I don't do stuff like that with them every day. There's particular days of the week where we're just like, nah, we're not doing anything. We're just going to either chill out as a family or um, you guys go and do whatever you want, go hang out with your friends or let's just wing it. Because yep. I have to do that sometimes, that too much structure is too much. So I'm assuming my kids will probably need that too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so there's that part, um, having what the kids need to have in place and then um, also my routine so they have my routine there for them to see because they feel really uneasy if that's not there. Mm. Um, yeah, so there's all of that. Kids strive. Uh, they 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 strive on on structure. Yeah, they do. Yeah, mine do. Well, most do. To be honest, like if you if you look, if you, if you kind of read into it, you'll see that a lot of um, an absence of structure is always going to create chaos in the home life. Mm -hmm. 
So once you've got that cleaned up, I guess then you start to look towards the business, right? Yeah. So how does that kind of look there? What's what's the main kind of issues that women have with their business when it's kind of out of order? Well, the very first thing is leaving their bullshit at the door. Yep. They're how not allowed mean? to walk. Whatever they've gone through in their day in the morning before they've actually gotten to work, they're not allowed to walk in that door with that same mindset. When mm-hmm. they go to work, they're there to run their business the way the business needs to be run. Yep. Um, you know, coming in with a positive attitude and everything. So they keep that environment there, not just for themselves, but for their team members if they have mm-hmm. team members. Um, so leaving everything behind and walking in there with a clean slate. Yep. Yeah. So that's the start. Um, and then it would be policies and procedures around whatever their business might be. So yep. Do you find that, you know, uh, depending on the, the level of entrepreneur that you're dealing with, is it quite common that there's an absence of policy and procedure? Oh, yeah. There's always an absence of it. <laughs> every time. <laughs> yeah, every time. Yeah. So when you kind of walk people through getting that right, it's all about, is it is it about kind of looking at things that they do regularly and putting them into a system? Yeah, pretty much just putting it into a system that works for them. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Does that, um, by, the, by the stage you've got to this point here, helping them out, is that really like creating a lot of, um, what kind of feeling is that creating in the ladies now when they kind of get to this point and they start to obviously clean up their home life, they've got organisation, their structure, and then they start to get that those systems They start their polishing business. their crown. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's what they start doing there because they're like, oh, yeah, I've got this. I'm going to start getting this ready to... That's what they do. So <laughs> as a result of that, though, obviously, you know, the more systems that you got in place, the better it is because then it gives you more free time. Yeah. But it also gives you less stress because you're not doing... It's it, like chaos. Yeah, it's not just chaos, but it also helps them um, weed out potentially not so um, productive team members. Yep. That sort of thing, um, that's where it like really starts to clean up the environment that they've got around them yep. at, in their workplace. And Well, let's talk about that. That's that's an important one. Mm. Work environment. Talk to us about that because that's obviously a very important thing, having the right people around. Your environment d- d- like heavily affects your, your psychology and your emotions. So talk to us. What kind of issues have you come across with environment problems, I suppose. Um, women are more nurturing, a little bit more fun-loving, yep. and, and um, female a little bit more. I f- female, I find in business, can be a little bit more flexible. Yep. And I, I can, I still do the same thing within my own workplace. Mm. I'm, I love having a good relationship with my team. Some people, it's straight down the line. They need to just have a work um, boss sort of relationship. relationship yep. Um, and then other people, they like to have both. And then sometimes they're just a little bit too much of the other, so they can't be one. So mm. it's, I guess it's just um, kind of figure. When I when we do do that, when we start to create the policies and procedures and stuff, you'll notice a lot of like hesitation in people because it's change. Yep. And, um, and they're creating like the environment they want within their workplace. Mm. So essentially if someone doesn't fit in, they're going to end up, moving along or you'll want to move them along. Yep, yeah. that makes sense. And that obviously leads into the next part of what you do with women, which is all about co- communication, right? Yeah. How do you have hard conversations? How do you improve the communication throughout the team? So talk to us about that. I was just thinking about how I handle things. So um, I have a couple of years ago, I had a completely different business. I had a uh, dance business and um, I had a team member there that wasn't quite working for me. And and this is before all of the skill sets and stuff that I have developed over time yep. and the learnings I've taken. But I communicate with them what they know, what they're doing, like my feelings about what they might be doing in, in the environment and let them come to their own conclusion. I've never actually had to fire anyone. Mm. They've left on their own accord. If I can help them come to the conclusion that they're not doing the thing that they need to do and that's the the right conclusion, then... They end up leaving on their own accord. Mm. Yeah. So what's, aside, obviously, aside from having potentially challenging conversations, what else kind of needs to be cleaned up for, for for the ladies that you help in regards to their communication going from a place where, obviously, you know, they're struggling with the two identities, they've got no balance, and they're moving up there where everything's going well. So what's what are the main things that you're looking at there? More so being assertive in their business, communicating what their needs are clearly to their team. Yep. And, um, yeah, it's th- because you are completely different at home. It's like two different hats. So, yep. yeah, your boss hat's very different. You have to communicate with clear direction for people, just like you do with your children, but then, you know, you also share that role with someone else. Yep. 
So um, in the workplace, it's just kind of um, basically having a healthy relationship, a communicable relationship with their team. Like mm-hmm. um, I do like team activities as well so they can develop that as a, as a team mm-hmm. and also um, just having teaching them to be assertive in a way that their um, staff members aren't going to take that as, uh, as aggressive or domineering. Yep. Um, but they have clear respect for their the boss. Yeah. Boss. Yeah. yeah, nice. That's pretty and much all I do there. That's, that's a, a big part though. Like obviously, you know, if you look at the big five personality traits, um, women do tend to score more highly on agreeableness, um, which when you're more agreeable, you're less assertive. So obviously that's obviously a very important thing in business to be more assertive because there is like links between your degree of how assertive you can be mm. and the degree of success that you can get. And that's why, you know, some men uh, do a lot better in business than females is because they're just more assertive. I was reading this thing. I can't remember what it was. I was talking about why, how it's possible that um, sometimes you can have like a men's piece of clothing that's priced at one thing and then a similar female piece of clothing priced more expensive. And I I can't remember who I was listening to. I can't remember. But um, the person I was talking about, it was like men just will just walk up and say, I'm not paying that. And we're so blunt and we're just like, give us a better price. And that's like that assertive thing, right? And like uh, women do tend to be, if they obviously if they are screwing more on the agreeable side of the scale, I mean, everyone's different. There obviously are some very, very um, less than agreeable ladies out there. Yeah. But like it's about obviously being able to still, because a lot of women have that nurture side to them, which is obviously being agreeable, um, but you have to develop that assertiveness. So what are the main chokeholds that you find that women have when it's, uh, I guess, when they're, they're trying to tap into their assertiveness? I actually find, uh, look, I've only, I've worked with a, uh, quite a few women, but I found that they all have quite a bit of an element of assertiveness and yeah. I've been able to get them to um, come to the conclusion that when they're in the workplace, that's, they need to wholeheartedly embody that assertiveness yeah. part of them. And I just kind of get in there and help them kind of understand um, how it works for them and why they use it when they do and, yeah, just get them to relate that back Cultivate into the Cultivate their assertiveness. Pretty much. So do you find that any of the ladies ever feel a sense of guilt for being too assertive or anything like that? Yeah. I do that at times. Yeah. How so? How does that kind of manifest? <laughs> um, I think it's um, b- being nurturers and really having a lot of, you know, really, really feminine energy, like more so than the balance of the two. Yep. Um, you find that you have a, a more guilt there because um, you don't like the idea of, of hurting people's feelings. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's what it is. Um, yeah, and that's why I, I kind of give them – the tools to create um, different ways of communicating with them. So there's less, less, um, less tension. conflict, yeah, less, less tension. <laughs> <laughs> they're yeah. awkward, they're, they're awkward, awkward conversations that you can have in business, but they have to be had. And like, yeah, if you are less assertive, that's going to be very hard. And if you obviously are a boss and you've got employees. Yeah, you can't wait till you, you're actually peeved off and then. Yeah. Or it, fly off the handle. <laughs> even another it. element to it, imagine that you're a boss and then you've got employees who are more assertive than you. That's when you have like so employees you, walking over you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So they're not, they don't fit in the, the environment. Exactly. So <laughs> you need to, you need to um, have a conversation to help them realise that maybe what? they're in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking back to a few different places there, so yeah. <laughs> I think that if you've got a, a great team, then you're... Um, you, you respect everyone's ideas and then at the end of the day, the boss makes the decision. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, you mentioned before though that um, you've got that partner or the help at home with the family life, but what if they don't have that help and they've got a few kids and they're trying to get that balance? Like, how does that differ? <sighs> Thanks, Dean. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is different, um, but you find, like, women are really resourceful when they are thrown in the deep end. If you've got children, you've got this innate ability to just get your shit together mm. and do what you need to do for your children. Mm. I have been on my own with my... I remember I had three children at the time and my husband and I had separated then. And um, I could have done so many different things. Like, being a mother just makes you do amazing things. You don't... 
you don't think about why can't I do this? You just get in and do it. And if mm. they don't know how to do that, then it's probably because they haven't worked on their emotions. Yeah, which is why yeah. you start there. Mm. That's why you start there. Mm. Good. Yeah. All righty. Well, look, we've got to start wrapping this up because I just yeah. say we are approaching that 40-minute mark. So as always with these episodes, if you were to give like three, I guess, really red-hot tips to any ladies in business watching this right now that are obviously struggling with getting that balance – what would be the three main things you'd kind of tell them so they can start to get that balance, they can stop wearing two masks or minimise it as much as possible and really start to have a business that they love? Uh, work on your emotions. Yeah. Emotions rule you if you do not rule them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you can rule structure an organisation yep. and make sure you have the right advice around you, the yep. right people in your ears. Yep. So yep. how do you mean? Um, if you've got a business coach, make sure that your business coach actually knows how to coach a mum in business. Yep. Because um, one of the things that, uh, sorry, I'm going to go into a topic. One of the things that I found when I did have coaches before is that they would tell me that my business would run slower because I was a mother. Right. And that is a crock of shit. Huh. Uh, your business doesn't run slower. Um, they fail to see um, what needed to be done at home and um, within the person for them to be able to get the results that they needed. And mm. that's, yeah, you need the right people or the right advice around you and the right sounds around you to be able to make um, advice if you can't think of those things on your own. Mm. I'd go a step further and say if you, you know, you're you looking for a business coach as well, not just obviously someone who knows how to work with, with mums in business, but also a mum in business who's got multiple businesses tends to help pretty well. <laughs> that wasn't a shameless plug. Whatever. All right, let's proceed. All right, so guys, um, it is approaching that time. So we're going to start to wrap up this episode right here. Look, if you've loved this episode and you obviously want to chat with Jade and connect, how can they do that? They can inbox me on Facebook, yeah, yeah. Jade Celeste Coaching. Or, cool. yeah, they can follow you there as well. Jade. Follow me on there. Are you on IG? I'm on Instagram as well, but generally Facebook's the best Facebook's way to go. Facebook's the best spot. Cool. Yep. So Jade's less coaching. Um, aside from that, guys, you know what to do. If you've loved this episode, give us some love. Drop some gifts. As I've said multiple times right now, gifts is like my currency at the moment. Mm. I try to, as much as possible, communicate everything with gifts. Drop some gifts down below. Share yes. us some love. Hit like. Hit share. Tag anyone who's in business that's a mum that would get value from seeing this right here. And once again, we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.